Magnetic Beam Steering. that beams of charged particles can be steered using either electric or magnetic fields. In this lesson, we'll use the principles of Newton's laws and circular motion in electric and magnetic fields to demonstrate that the field we choose depends on the beam's velocity. In the injector line, electrostatic fields are used to steer the negative hydrogen ion beam, which is traveling at 2.5% the speed of light. At that velocity, the voltage on the electrostatic benders can be handled easily. However, protons exiting the cyclotron reach velocities of one-third to three-quarters the speed of light, and at these incredible speeds, steering them presents a significant challenge. And here's why. Let's take a proton traveling at one-third the speed of light, which is approximately 100 million meters per second. Let's calculate the potential difference to steer a proton around a bend with a 2.6 meter radius of curvature and a 3.8 centimeter separation between the electrostatic plates. We've used this calculation before in the injection line, so we'll just quickly go through it here. We start by equating the electrostatic force with the centripetal force. Plugging in the expressions for the electric field, and the centripetal acceleration, we rearrange the formula to isolate the potential difference. Wow, one and a half million volts. That's a huge potential difference. In fact, it's way too large to even consider. To meet this challenge, we use magnetic fields instead of electrostatic fields to focus and steer the proton beam exiting the cyclotron. Let's see why. Begin by using a vertical magnetic field to steer the proton beam perpendicular to its velocity. Using Newton's second law, we substitute in the magnetic force for F and the centripetal acceleration for A. Now let's rearrange this formula to show the magnetic field as a function of the radius of curvature. After plugging in the known values for the proton mass, charge and velocity, and the radius of curvature, we can calculate the magnetic field. As you can see, we obtain 0.4 Tesla, and it's reasonably easy to build electromagnets with this strength. This is why magnets are used at Triumph to focus and steer protons traveling close to the speed of light. Now here's a bit more challenging problem that you could try. See if you can design the 0.4 Tesla electromagnet that we've just discussed. You'll need the formula relating the magnetic field to the number of turns and current in a coil of wire. In the workbook, you'll find additional guidance to help you work this out. <laughs> 